This is Season 2, Episode 19 of My Modular Journey. And today we're going to take a look at the Winter Bloom Castor and Pollux Dual Oscillator. The Castor and Pollux came in around April 28th in the, in the big oscillator <laughs> purchase. It was around $279 US, and it is described as a Juno-inspired oscillator containing two digitally controlled analog oscillators based on the original Juno 106 design. So there's two separate oscillators. The left is Castor, the right is Pollux. Uh, and I kind of love that. Going through the interface, top to bottom here, uh, up at the top, and this is going to be the same for both sides. Um, up at the top is the pitch CV input jack, and that is a uh, zero to six volt uh, pitch range. Uh, the knob here, this is on each, again, each side is a pitch adjustment that goes uh, negative one volt to positive one volt from center. Uh, next down is the pulse width modulation knob here, which uh, also has a CV input here, which has a range of zero to five volts as well. Uh, on this side, again, both sides, saw oscillator. I don't know if I should take this for saying ramp up and ramp down, but <laughs> that's what the shape of the little symbol is. Uh, each oscillator has three outputs for each of the, uh, the wave shapes. So there's a ramp wave output, a pulse wave output, and a sub square wave output right here. So this means you can have six signals coming out of this, and then you can have pulse modulation. It's kind of amazing. This is a very unassuming little module. It looks very simple on its surface, but it goes super deep. There's so much configuration. Uh, down here at the, let me get back through, through the interface. Down here at the bottom, uh, we have casters output and we have Pollux's output, or we have a mixture of the two. So if you plug, if you output here, uh, you then use this as a crossfader between the, the caster and Pollux oscillators to mix them together. So that's pretty neat. You can either pull them, put them all out here or you can sum up the sum of the three different wave shapes and pulse would sum up here for each side. Um, kind of astounding amount of configuration here. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with all of that. Uh, there's a button here in the middle, which if you tap it uh, lightly, it puts it into hard sync, which internally will sync uh, Pollux to caster, making that beautiful hard sync sound. There's hardware chorusing built right in. Uh, there's also an internal LFO uh, for the chorus and or internally modulate the uh, pulse width. So you don't really, you don't need to jack it in, you, but you can. You, know, you can do, do an external one or use their internal LFO. So lots of stuff, lots of options built right into this thing. And it's all right here on the front deck. You don't have to pull it out and mess with jumpers because you, you know how I am about jumpers. One thing that is on the back, you know, on the back is of course the USB port for uh, hooking it to the computer to do configuration or firmware updates. Plus this, there's this little, I don't know if you can see this little tiny button right here. Uh, you have to press that twice to get into um, bootloader mode in order to load new firmware. All the things that this thing does, I only have one negative encounter with it and that was the pots were really sticky when I first got the module. I could not turn, literally could not turn these at all. So I contacted Winterbloom through email. I just contacted Thea. I, I do want to give a big shout out to Thea at Winterbloom for spending a Sunday with me uh, back and forth in email, troubleshooting a couple of things that wound up being user error. And then of course, working on the, the sticky pots, calming me down that I wasn't gonna snap anything off the board if I, if I gave it a little bit of pressure. Um, how I had to fix my unit though, because it was it was so badly uh, misaligned, is I, I had to pull the plate off and actually get in there with pliers and move the pot up a little bit. So uh, there is a video uh, that Thea provided showing how to do that. So clearly this is a common thing, or why would there be a video? Hopefully they fix that in future versions, but otherwise mine is working perfectly fine now. And that's what we're gonna show off now. Let me get it in the rack and turn it on. All right, Castor and Pollux is mounted in the rack. Let's give it some power. Turn on my things. I'm gonna be using the System 8 keyboard here to drive it a little bit. So I'm not sure if you can see that real clearly on this camera, but uh, right now the module is pulsating these beautiful colors, uh, are these RGB colors. 
uh, all the way up and down here. Uh, so that's pretty neat. It's a kind of a, it's just a really nice little design, a uh, very pleasant <laughs> little design. So I, I, I love the way it looks, and I also love how powerful it is. So why I chose Castor and Pollux is first, you had me at Juno. Uh, most people who know me know the story <laughs> that I once upon a time had a Juno 60. Uh, foolishly sold it back in 1988, thinking my fancy new Korg DW8000 was more than I would ever need. Uh, what a dumbass. Since then, I've been on this quest to, to acquire nearly every soft synth, plug-in, module, anything at all that resembles the Juno. And it's two of them. So uh, I was playing with just the caster side one day uh, with the saw and the sub, and almost in tears how beautiful it sounded. And then I kicked in the second side, and yeah. It was beautiful. So that's why I chose it. How I plan to use it is very simple. Uh, I wrote this down. Juno drones. Loud Juno drones. Fat Juno leads. <laughs> Juno strings. Uh, yeah, you get the idea. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, my Friday the 13th Sonic Experiment uh, was the first day I had uh, Castor and Pollux. Actually, the first day I had c and p here uh swan and the quad precision oscillator all three of them came in the same day within a week or so of playing with them i did the friday the 13th video which um castor and pollux was the brahm that you heard in that patch because it is just beautifully fat and beefy love it so uh let's wire something up and just listen to what it sounds like so first we're going to listen to what the saw output sounds like and so this is uh apparently if you use these jacks, it's the raw sound coming out. When you turn up these knobs, I believe it's when it gets mixed and summed down here. So there's the saw. There's the pulse. Pulse width. And of course the sub. So if I put it down here and I turn up the saw, and turn up the sub. You can just hear how beefy that starts sounding. Or the pulse whip. So that's pretty cool. And, and Pollock sounds exactly the same. It's just the other side. So if I was to use the sync, let me see how to do that. So I believe I have to be in the mix mode here with the, with the mix turned up in order to hear the, uh, the sync. So there's Castor and Pollux together. If I tap the sync button, now I get this nice hard sync. If I want to modulate that, I put a modulation into 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 Pollux, who is now hard syncing to Caster, and so that's how that happens. set my envelope up a little better here. Tune things up. You can use the internal LFO. I believe you have to hold the button and turn the knob to, to set the speed of the LFO. But then this LFO will adjust not only the pulse, width, pulse widths up here for the, each oscillator, but it'll also adjust the chorus. So in order to do that, let me just try what that sounds like. So see, that slowed it down a lot. So 
So you can kind of hear that chorus effect a little. Turning up more of the chorus effect. So I think the other thing the manual said was that the chorus is only on the Pollock side, I believe. I could be wrong about that. If you want the LFO to go faster, you hold the hard sync button and turn it up. So this should also affect our pulse width modulation. For both oscillators. That sounds pretty good. Uh, now if we just start, if I just start cranking stuff up though, I'm gonna go back to just the caster side for a quick moment. All right, so turning up. Let me turn on my sequence again. Bring in a little reverb. Everything sounds better with reverb. I'll move over to the mix mode. So it should just be caster now. If I bring in Pollux. What I've done is I've wired up a quick uh, Pamela's new workout, a couple of Euclidean's uh, pitches going into Castor and Pollux individually, uh, because if you only have one, uh, it'll normal over, so Castor will, will pitch Pollux as well. But if you put in a second one, now they're running separate. I also have two separate outs going to the mixer over here, um, and then two envelopes coming over here to drive the mixer. And so it, it kind of sounds like this in mono, you know, with, with a little reverb. If I put them both in stereo here, you can hear left ear, right ear. And that's always fun. So if you bring in some subs. For my last trick, I'm going to take a modulation source from Modbox into an attenuator uh, because this, this seems to be pretty sensitive as far as how much voltage I'm allowed to send it. I want to do pulse width modulation on caster with a little sub, and I want to attenuate it with, uh, with this attenuator over here. So it'll be moving a little bit anyway. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, come out of here to the Geranalog filter. All right, so now I have Geranalog set to uh, re no residence, uh, high cutoff, and we'll start the sequence. And we'll just hear it playing its normal sounds. Little reverb. Uh, mixed here. 
This is the caster side. You can kind of hear the pulse width modulation going on. So then we'll mix Pollux back in. And now we'll uh, mess with the filter. So the filter is driven from an envelope over here on Ornament and Crime. And right now it's the low pass 24. We can change that to 12, get a different sound. Band boost and notch. Let's get rid of some of that reverb. Band boost and notch. All right, I just I just want to do a little bit of little bit of beefiness here. Winter Bloom, Caster, and Pollux. Dual digitally controlled oscillators in the style of the Juno 106. Or Juno 60, as I prefer. Has a really huge sound, a lot of sound output options. Uh, I love the, the fact you can mix them. I love the fact you can sum them down. And I love the fact you can put them all out individually. Tons of sounds coming out of this thing. Uh, two CV inpo inputs here, so you could have one each one playing a different melody or a different bass track, as you just heard. Have it tuned to fifths. Sounds wonderful. Just sounds wonderful. And one final shout out to Thea. Thank you again for spending your Sunday afternoon with me. So that's it for episode 19, the Winter Bloom Caster and Pollux Dual Oscillator. Coming up next, the Winter Modular Eloquencer. Winter Bloom, Winter Modular. Hmm. Winter is coming. Stay tuned for that. <laughs>